Welcome back. We are still playing Blackwell Legacy, the first game in the four-part series of Blackwell games. I'm also not sure if they have a overall collection besides the Blackwell bundle. So last time we spread our ashes over some bridge. We discovered ourselves locked out of our apartment. We went and saw the doctor who's been taking care of our aunt for the last 25 years and who's a, no surprising little about her. Except that she has some sort of possibly hereditary dementia that our grandmother had as well and he is scared that we might have it too. With that lovely news on this already awful, awful day, we are going to continue on to Washington Square Park. Down here we are told by the doorman that Nish woman named Nishanti. Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still Sorry. looks the same, oh. I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Yes, yes, I'll talk about We're down here to see Nishanti, who the doorman told us could probably vouch for us, because he will not let us in, because he's not the regular doorman. He does not recognize us, because it's New York, and people don't talk to each other. So, we're here looking for Nishanti. We noticed the dog park is empty, though, which is this dog park right here. Let's go check it out. The dog park is empty. There's no reason to go in there. So the dog park's empty in the middle of the day. That's kind of weird. But, you know, whatever. Let's go to the fountain. Mmm. Nope. Headache. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. It's been a long day. Alright. Got some flute music playing. And a doggy. I don't a doggy. think so. I don't want to click the doggy instead He's of... He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. Okay. Is the doggy following us around? He is, in fact, following us around. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti... Sharma, was it? This is gonna be awkward. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. But that might get her attention. Alright. So got everything a little videotape of her. There is Nishanti. That's Nishanti Sharma. My next door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. She doesn't look like she's gonna stop anytime soon, so let's try to talk to her. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. That is kind of rude, but I don't see another option, so try again. All right, here I go. Good job. Um, um, uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. Right. You know, make them jog on the block or something, maybe? You know, do some push-ups. Get that post-workout high, and then go. Talk to her. Okay, okay go. You can do this. Right. Good girl. Um. Crap. Calm down. Need to calm down. Okay, so that. It's not helping. So, yeah, we still got this dog, which is probably Nishanti's dog. Those extendable leashes. Right. We're sure it's Nishanti's dog, dog. Because Rosa told us. Because she said that Rosa would kill us if we opened. If we, you know, hooked the leash from the trash can over there. Which Rosa won't do, because she's. Being too scared to talk to her, fortunately, I can do that. So, we can come over here and the dog follows us. Then we can walk around the light pole and the dog will follow us. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti, I'm coming. Ta da! And that's how you get Nishanti's attention because the dog is too stupid. They're all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, mm -hmm. it's you! The lady next door! Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Just stalking me. Let's, let's see, we need a favor from her, so let us compliment. That's a cute dog you've got. <laughs> Grin. Isn't he just? <laughs> Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh! Great. Great. Anyway, I, I don't guess. think we formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um, yes. 
I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. So Nishanti's kind of awesome. Hey, number two. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep. Dog walking. parks make me stressed. Apparently. Or you know, dementia, or death. Or could you be Jim? Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rose Angela. She lives here. She does. Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. I'll punch you in the face. Alright, that's probably bad for our new friend. Um... Well, now you're sure. And you must be so proud of yourself. Well... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. Ashanti's very nice. Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Um, let's be polite. Don't think about it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Um, what's well, mean? That's not... Oh, that's gonna be bad. Right, that's what oh, anyway. I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes. Um, their names are me, myself, and I. Awful. Um, it's that was joke. worth. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. I'm mm. sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise, and your eyes. Well, Rub let's my just eyes. say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. Well, we'll my see eyes. Each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. I need to go back to the eye thing. Hey. Yes. Um, you can call me Rosa if you like. Rose Angela is kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. All right, so we are back finally to our apartment. <laughs> And here's where Rosa lives. Thank God. Mm -hmm. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Let's see what's in our house. We got some clippings. What are these? Some old book review clippings. All right, she's a writer. Telephone. We don't need that. My computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. What's he got? Ooh, we have some this envelope. Envelope had no trouble entering the building. Go figure. This must be what they were sending us um, earlier. Let's pick that up. Looks like it's from Bellevue. There you go. Look around some more, That's then grim. look at that. The P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. Can we take him? He's fine where he is. Come on now, don't be like that. And we got a photograph. Let's look at it. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. Angriff? When I was a little girl, I'd try to talk to my younger self in this picture. I was trying to give myself advice about the future. It didn't work then, and I doubt it would work now. You are a cynical, cynical woman. No. I used to talk to this picture when I was a little girl, but not anymore. Auntie Lauren. She took care of me after my parents died. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. So there we go. That is Auntie Lauren. That leads to my bedroom. It's an oversized closet, but it suits me fine. So we can't just go in there. So stove cabinets, nothing interesting on this side of the room. A fake plant, got a real plant. That's all we have. It's a pretty, you know, sparse place. 
So let's check out this envelope up here. Okay, so this really is 25 pages. So I'm gonna go through and kind of tell you what's going on. And then I'll kind of pause over each item. In case, if you want to read it, pause the video for a second. And you can read as you go. But, you know, we're not going to read the entire thing, like, all, all the way through. So this is all correspondence between um, Lauren, you know, her aunt, Rose's aunt, and Jack, uh, Lauren's brother, and their mother, I think, might be in here some, somewhere as well. So the first thing is Jack sending something to um, Lauren and saying, you know, hey, love you, miss you come visit because you're at college and you know then he gets a typewriter and this whole thing is all about um, while Lauren's away things start happening to their mother she doesn't um oh well, here you go here's where it starts, starts it she's acting odd started a few days ago she suddenly screamed and fainted she started pointing at the corner of the room this kind of stuff and then you know the mom, of course, sends her letter, tries to brush it off. Jack, of course, is happy none of that mess, because Lauren only comes back during um, Thanksgiving. And it's like someone's watching over her shoulder. Sits by herself. She talks to herself. Um, their mom ends up here. It is actually. She locks herself in the bathroom, and she's talking to somebody, and there's nobody there. And she says the name Joey. So this is a you know another time they're talking about Joey. And um, here's where they ended up finally committing her to an institution. I'm not sure if this letter or another one. But she's screaming and she's tearing her hair out and all this stuff. Um, this is just that Lauren graduated college and all this stuff. So as it's gone by, the mother has died. And now Jack um, has met this new girl. And he's just, you know, even on his sister about her. And now Jack's concerned. Lauren has stopped returning his messages. Um, she never answers the phone whenever he calls. Um, so Jack's trying to get her to come visit because he misses his big sister. And now... I should on this one. So he went over. She didn't answer the door. We never, even though Jack came to... Um, came to give her a present but he heard her talking to Joey so it's a, you know, another instance of Joey and you know which is something else I don't think I need to tell me what so now Jack is worried that the same thing happened to his mother is happening to his sister as well and he hires a private investigator to look you know to go find what's going on and just like what happened to his mother whenever Lauren was alone the private investigator saw her faint his body to call an ambulance, but then Lauren just gets up and walks off like nothing happens. So this is the only letter we think we get from Lauren saying, hey, stay away, don't worry about me. I'm handling it, and I'm not going to explain, just trust me. Jack basically saying, screw that noise. We're family, and that's, just, that's not how this goes. So it says they're getting married, you have to come to the wedding. Lauren apparently does go to the wedding. And it's the same on the honeymoon. Blah, blah, blah. There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. So this is one telling her that she's an aunt. They had Rosa. And or Rosalinja. You know, the, of course, I say her name all wrong. Anyway, Re and Jack are, the, you know, the par Rosa's parents. And they're telling her about her and, you know, telling her how she's now an aunt. Let me get the curse anyway. And then this is the final letter where telling... Lauren that Jack and Maria are dead which means she does have the right to take custody of Rosa who is at this time five and we wouldn't get the phone before I get back to that hello Rosangelina hi hi Bob thanks so much for submitting your last review on time for once yeah I've got a little assignment for you today. Assignment? Human interest, Blackwell. Suicide. College girl named Joanne Sherman. That's awful, but... 
You know the Brittany house, the NYU dorm? Yes, but... Speak to some people on her floor. Get a word in with the roommate. Listen. Speak to the RA, too. And hey, see if you can score a picture of the girl. But I don't do that stuff. I write book reviews. Versatility. Time to get out of your comfort zone. Jeremy's over at City Hall covering that strike, so you are it. Get cracking. I hate him so much. Is freelancing for that stupid paper even worth it? I guess it keeps me writing, but... Oh, whatever. I'll just go over there and get it done. It's not like I don't have enough death in my life right now. Maybe this isn't a bad thing. It's like being a real reporter. Sort of. My old notepad should come in handy for this. Every time I'm about to talk, she says something else. I'm like, woman, be quiet for a minute. All right. Ignoring that for a second. Throw some letters. Or not some photos on the letters. So this I is... I don't want to ruin the picture. What should I mess with Is that it? my dad? He looks so young. I always pictured my dad as being older. So this is Jack. This is Maria, her parents. I assume that's my mother. She sort of looks like me, I guess. Other than that, she's a total stranger. And Auntie Lauren. That's definitely Auntie Lauren. She's looking at something off camera. I wonder what it was. So obviously that's at their wedding, and she's looking at something that's not in the picture, apparently. Then we have one more photo from Christmas. And this again is Lauren and Jack and their mother. He was, you yeah, know, it was dead now. Well, I guess Lauren's dead too, but both of them apparently had this hereditary dementia. So we have a notebook. This is a new game mechanic here. So it lists all the things you've heard about, and you can combine two things in order to... Okay, I'll show you. So click that and click something else. My boss asked me to find a photograph of Joanne to put it in the paper. And it will put them together and she'll make a comment on it. Sometimes it gives you new clues. As you talk to people, it will get you new things. So let's go to continue this and talk to people at the university. Brittany Hall dorm. Let's go there. Ugh. I feel like hell and I have to interview college kids. Hopefully this won't take too long. So you can click on all these doors. Sarah Kaplan and Julie Gilberg. If you like, but really, only two of them had by in there. So let's just go to those two. We'll start with the RA. Hmm? Hi, I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Can I help you? Perhaps. Could I ask you a few questions? Oh, this is about Joanne, isn't it? You know her? Of course. Well, I am the RA for this floor. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't know everybody. The campus police found her around 5 a.m. this morning. Can you tell me about her? Hmm. Well, all right. But could you leave my name out of it? Absolutely. That shouldn't be a problem. Good. Joanne's parents have already asked the dean to fire me. I don't need anyone else knowing who I am. What do you want to know? Why are you a dude? Could you tell me about Joanne again? Well, as I said, I didn't know her socially, but she seemed nice enough. Nobody ever complained about her. She always had friends around her. She never had any trouble, as far as I know. Her suicide came as a total surprise. Let's ask about it. Can you tell me anything about Joanne? She jumped off the roof. She died instantly. It was in the middle of the night. There was, there was no way anybody could have stopped her. Make sure you print that. Will do. You got a photograph? Would you have a picture of Joanne? A picture? No. Why would I? Just asking. Because you're a creepy stalker, dude. So how did you get to be an RA of this floor? What do you mean? Well, it's a girl's floor and you, well... Aren't? Yes. Well, it's obviously. Like Someone at the registrar thought Adrian was a girl's name. So here I am. None of the girls have complained? Not yet. They seem to prefer it. This sort of thing happens quite frequently. You'd be surprised. Maybe it's just me, but I only know. Well, that's all for now. That's all we got. Thanks for helping out. Just remember, leave my name out of it. Anyway, I only know one Adrian? Maybe two. I don't know. The one I think of right now is the guy, so when I think of Adrian, I think of. Of course, I get you got from Rocky, Adrian. So I guess that's one and one for me. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll buy it then. Hi, I'm Rosangela Blackwell. 
Am I supposed to know you? No, I'm no. the village I. The village what? The village I. The newspaper. I've never heard of it. Can you read? It's just a small paper. Yeah, I guess that. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about What do you think I want? If that's all right. Jesus Christ. I'm busy with midterms. I told the campus police everything. Do you have to bother me? Yes. So she killed herself. Big whoop. Why is that my problem? Because you're her roommate. So you and Joanne were close. Brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Can you go away? That's what I'm here for. Nope. You don't care? Not even a little bit? No, I don't. Why the hell should I? For that matter, why should you? That's my job. Will you please calm down? Calm down? Who the hell calm do you down. Think you are? I just want to know a little bit about Joanne. Fine. You want to know about Joanne? Mm -hmm. She couldn't take the pressure, so she jumped off the roof. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Nope. Same old Joanne. Studied at her desk all day and slept all night, as usual. Quiet as a little mouse. So she slept all day? Joanne never had trouble sleeping. How would I know? You lived with her. Like I pay attention. So Joanne was a good student. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Kill me here. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Why do you want to know? Just background info for the paper. I don't think so. Suit yourself. It's probably smart. All right, let's ask about Adrian. Can you tell me anything about Adrian? The RA? He's okay. He helps us out when we need it and keeps out of our way when we don't. It's the way it should be. I guess I should ask about the actual person. Is there anything else person. you can tell me about Joanne? No. Do you have any thoughts on why Joanne would kill herself? Nope. Just another kid who couldn't hack it. You are amazing. Do you have a photograph of Joanne that we could use for the newspaper? You want a what? Just a photograph. You'll get a it right picture. Back. Yeah, right. You think I'm giving you anything? Think again. You are difficult. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Mm hmm. Great. Alright, so there's nobody in these other rooms. And then you can click them and get names off all of them if you want. Same thing on bulletin board. There's, nobody, there's nothing going on there. Let's go back and talk to the RA about Joanne's roommate, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me again. You have more questions, I imagine? Yeah, is that okay? Obviously. I suppose so. What Thank do you. you. Want to know? I want to know about Kelly. What can you tell me about Joanne's roommate? Kelly? Have you met her? Yes. Obviously, I know her name. Uh, but don't judge her by that. She's the sharpest. I was until you said something. She gets straight A's on everything. Really? Yep, she's pre med. Do you know if Joanne had any trouble sleeping? I'm afraid I wouldn't. Her roommate, Kelly, never complained, but that's not surprising. Why, is Why that? not? Well, Kelly rarely spent the night in her room. She only comes here to study, as far as I've seen. So she sleeps somewhere else? Do you know where Kelly was sleeping? No, it's not my place to ask. Was Joanne a good student? I don't think she had any problems, but of course, the pressure can get to anybody. Alright, that's what I want from you. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for helping out. Just remember, leave my name out of it. Done. Alright, so here's where we get to use our notebook mechanic. Need some more. So we put these together. And do, um... Kelly sleeps elsewhere, but she said Joanne sleeps all night. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Wait a minute. There you Something go. Isn't right. If Kelly's been spending her night somewhere else... How can she know if her roommate was sleeping well or not? Hmm. I think exactly. she's lying to me. Uh-huh. So you see that gets rid of some items and gives you another one. You can try to combine other stuff, it might not do anything. If anyone has a photograph of Joanne, it would be Kelly. If only I could convince her to give it to me. So we've got that. I don't see what one has to do with the other. I can do that makes no sense, it gets that. And sometimes they're pretty dense as to what makes sense together. The game's like, what do you mean that Joanne and her suicide nothing to do with each other? It's like, wait, what? They, okay, come on, game. But the most part, it's pretty good. Did you lie to me, woman? Did you lie to me? Yes, so? You told me that Joanne slept in her room every night. 
Uh -huh. How would you know Joanne slept here if you've been sleeping somewhere else? Huh? Oh, well, I just assumed. Did you lie to me? I didn't lie. I just... No, oh, screw it. You want to talk? Fine. What do you want to know? Thank you. So what was Joanne really like? To be honest, there's nothing to say. She was studying political science, which is kind of cool, I guess. But she was so vanilla. Vanilla? You know, sweet, but not much there. Just a typical college kid. Acted just like everybody else. She seemed proud of it. So the opposite of our Pierce Skull sweatpants girl here. As for suicide. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Well, no. Although the last few weeks she's been talking in her sleep. What did she say? No idea. Couldn't understand her. She swore up and down that she wasn't doing it. She looked a bit scared though. Scared? How so? Just scared. I didn't need the drama, so I've been sleeping at my boyfriend's place. So you weren't here when she killed herself? No, I wasn't here. N not that it would have made much of a difference. Are we done? I could really use a photo of Joanne, if you have one. Hmm. All right. Just a sec. Thanks. So much easier this was. This was hers. It was on her desk. She won't be needing it anymore. Joanne's the girl on the left. Thanks. And I think we're good. Well, for I appreciate it. Out. Yeah, sure. Whatever. So we have our story contents. We have our photograph. Let us get out of here. I think that's it. Oh. This is getting worse. At least I have enough mm. of the story now. I better get home. Yep. Alright, let's go home. This is getting bad. Get headaches all the time. Must be that dementia, which I don't know if that gives you headaches, but... Oh my god. This really hurts. Sleep, Jeff, like, that's all I need. I'll just Advil? take the story and get to bed. Shouldn't take that long. Alright, so I believe we're going to be ending here in a moment. I'm going to get one last little part, but I don't think there's a, I don't think they pause in the story enough for me to talk about it. So we're going to get to that part. We're going to end with pick up next time. Just so you're aware when you know everything just cuts off here in a second. We're gonna finish this up and then write our article. Right. No more interruptions. Exactly. Done. Article's finished, picture is scanned, and I am done for the day. Mm-hmm. Oh. Something's happening. No. What's I need fresh air. Yeah, let's get out of here. This is crazy. Here. Okay, there's one more short scene first. I forgot after the writing this before we'll end. All right, fresh. Let's you know. Let's go talk to Nishanti. We just met our new neighbors. Let's see what she's Come doing. In. Hi, Nishanti. I need some like herbal tea or something. Hello, Rosa. Come hey, in. Nishanti. Come in. Don't mind Thank the you. pooch. He's harmless. Like if I kicked him, he'd be, you know, I could win. Let's make small talk. So, um, how are you? Oh, I'm just fine. Right, Moti? Aren't we just fine? That's what this dog is. That dog is adorable. Moti? Mm -hmm. He's spoiled rotten, but he's good company. He's taken quite a shine to you, that's for sure. Huh. Yeah, usually I'm not good with animals. You never had a childhood pet? A pet? No, I had a teddy bear. <laughs> well, you probably had the right idea. Moti's a little thing, but you wouldn't know it from the amount he eats. He's very active, it seems. Yes, that probably explains it. See that box of biscuits? I buy a new one every two days. Moti doesn't have a stomach. He has a black hole that sucks in food. Feel free to give him one if you like. Uh, let's ask about stuff first. So you play the flute, huh? Yes, I play the flute. It's called a bansuri. What about you? Do you play an instrument? Me? Nope. No, I can hardly play the kazoo. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha. You strike okay. me as being creatively inclined. Are you a painter? A writer? 
Well, I'm trying to be a writer. I there you go. Anything published? Nothing really, aside from book reviews in the Village Eye. Village Eye? You mean that little paper they sell at the stand? You've read it? I've seen it around, but I've never actually read it. Perhaps I will the next time I see it. I like how honest Ashanti is. Let's ask about the park. Why do you play the flute in the park? It's a place to go, I suppose. I was walking there one day and I had the Bansuri with me, so I started playing. Next thing I hmm. knew, I had a bunch of people around me. So I go there as often as I can now. It gets me out of this stuffy apartment, and I admit I like the attention. Plus, Moti loves the dog run there. Well, he did until they closed it down. Yeah, what was that about? Do you know? Why did they close down the dog run? It seemed yeah. okay to me. Nobody really knows. It started about a week ago. Dogs started howling, running around like maniacs, acting strange. Some even hurled Good themselves day at now. the door trying to get out. They say it's some kind of high frequency wave that's caused by electric cables or something. Some high-pitched sound that the dogs can hear but we can't. But I know better. You know better? Definitely. I noticed these things. I could tell that things weren't quite right. Something in the air. It's not a high-pitched noise. Psychic. That would only cause a dog pain. This was more than pain. The dogs were scared. What was there to be scared of? I have no idea. But I know what I sensed, just like you did. Me? You sensed mm -hmm. it. Don't think I didn't notice. I didn't sense anything. Well, perhaps. Maybe I'm just spouting nonsense. Pretty sure an Ashanti is the smartest person in this game. Um, I don't want to talk about that stuff. Let's, let's off feed the dog. Try feeding the dog. Sure, here, take one. I have plenty. Go ahead Thanks. and feed him. He's always hungry. Okay, I think we've got to. Well, I'd better go. Take care, Rosa. Come back whenever you'd like. Thanks. I don't actually mean go though. I mean go talk to the dog. Here, boy. Let's argue my treat. Um, what do I do now? Just say, go get it. This is like one of those get training it. moments. Go get it. Where the game's training you about something important that you have to do later. Because that See ya. did nothing for us. Let me guess, you're hungry again. See, but they're definitely making a point, right, to show you go get it. about feeding the dog a treat. So that mechanic is going to be important somehow later. So said hi to Nishanti and to Moti. Nothing else we're going here. I guess it was the dog biscuits back there. Let's get out of here. So now I think this is a good place to stop this video. Uh, we will, you know, so we'll cut off here. And what have we learned? We've gone to. We got a letter from our aunt's thing, so we know, you know, some more backstory about how Rosa's grandma, grandmother. You know, I kind of slowly went crazy and was talking about some Joey character. And then she died after she died. Aunt Lauren kind of went crazy and said something about Joey at some point and would just pass out of the street and get back up later and be okay. And we went down and we talked to um, the people at the college about this girl who jumped off the roof and killed herself because she seemed to be scared of something. And we've also got the dog run going on. That is something else that the dogs even are scared of, but nobody knows what that is about. So we're going to pick up right here next time. We are playing the Blackwell Legacy. This is our second part of that so far in the four-parter Blackwell bundle. I am Christopher, and I will see you next time.